Hey guys, Scott here again with another great test lined up for everyone. I have a 24-way trim restoration product test. I want to remind you if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button and follow along. I'm working with Google to try to resolve this issue of my bell icon not working for notifications. Uh, it's saying the channel is made for kids when I've turned that off, but it's still saying it. So they're still working on it, trying to get that resolved. What started out as a small comparison test to show my clients quickly exploded into a large one thanks to my channel subscribers. It, I went to my local junkyard looking for a Chevy Avalanche bed trim or cover. If you're not in the US, just Google it. These are notorious for fading quickly and turning a light gray color. The junkyard had one Avalanche but it was stripped already so I started looking around and I found another vehicle that would work. I found this Pontiac Montana minivan that looked like it would fit the bill until I got it back to my shop and I realized it was painted. So that was a waste. So I ended up buying a couple Chevy Avalanche panels off of eBay for about $100 each and instead of going all over East Texas to find some, this was the easiest way to do it. Uh, so they came from a 2005 model year if that makes any difference to you. Before we get into this, I'm going to quickly go over each of the 24 different products that we're going to test for longevity and durability under the Texas sun, which can be absolutely brutal on vehicles here. So we're going to have two identical test panels. One is going to have one coat of each product and one with two coats of each product to see if additional layers make them last any longer. So first things first, a little of the science behind this, you're going to see a lot of these products will contain silicones and petroleum distillates. And it's, it's the way these manufacturers go about attempting to produce the same result through dim, uh, different chemicals. So a little about these. Silicone is a chemical polymer and it can be engineered for exceptional water repellents, gloss, bonding properties, etc. Uh, the myth that silicone is bad is just that, it's a myth. And so like most, most myths, there's a little truth behind it. Uh, silicones, they're basically inert, so it's what's added to them that's bad. The silicones by themselves, no issue. Petroleum distillates can be further purified or redistilled or combined with other chemicals to produce a wide range of safe and useful products like what we're going to test here. In spite of the ability to redistill and remove any harmful components, it's pretty rare in the automotive industry that this is actually done. The good part about this, there's a chemical called PDS or polydimethylsilazane, and it's a water-based amino functional fluid or silicone that doesn't migrate or dry out the plastic from, uh, from the material. It has less UV radiation and, and absorption and the, the other downside is it attracts dust. So basically what you end up with is it's called an emulsion. It's water and oil combined together to produce a water-based silicone, essentially. So most of the modern silicone formulas are water-soluble anyway, so it has no water or petroleum in it and they're completely inert. The bad part is a cheaper alternative to silicone is called dimethyl. And so you'll see dimethyl silazane in some of these products. Uh, it contains petroleum distillates and they're environmentally unsound, so they're what gives you that slick or oily finish that attracts the dust and the dirt that you don't want. And then of course the worst part of this is silicone, it's an active ingredient in the sun uh, UV amplification. So a low quality silicone dressing, it'll evaporate, the silicone is left behind, and then the sun amplifies this residue and so the drying process accelerates and it causes the rubber and the vinyl and the plastic to dry out which turns them gray or white or brown and so they, they lose their flexibility, they become very brittle and of course they fail. Water based dressings won't have oils or petroleum distillates so it doesn't give you that uh, greasy uh, feel. It's more of a natural looking satin finish as opposed to a very glossy shiny finish. So let's get into each of the products and see what we've got here. I'm going to quickly go over what's in these. Uh, through the MSDS that I acquired, Kiwi Shoe Dye has petroleum distillates, has a chemical called carbon black and paraffin wax. Turtle Wax Trim Restorer, petroleum distillates and polydimethyl silazane. So here we have the oil and the water based all in one. This is on the lower end of things too. Next we have Mother's Back to Black, been around a long time. Main ingredient in that other than water is N-butyl acetate. It is a solvent. 
So you're essentially using a solvent based product to achieve the results. Meguiar's Ultimate Black Trim Restorer that has mineral oil other than water as the main ingredient. It says it only lasts for weeks. Some of these say years. Armorall Outlast Trim and Plastic Restorer. Uh, the main ingredient in that is petroleum distillates. Mother's CMX Ceramic Trim Restoration, another product with N-butyl acetate. And again, that's a solvent. You know, you typically see it in lacquers or paints, but here it is in a trim restoration product. Next product is called Forever Black. It was recommended by one of the subscribers. Carbon Black is the main ingredient in that, and you'll typically find that used as a filler in rubber and plastic products. It's also a pigment or a dye. Carpro Pearl main ingredient is several different versions of silozanes. You may be asking why no Carprobe Deluxe. I tried to steer away from the ceramics even though there are a few in here so that's why Pearl got got the go-ahead instead. Adams Black Trim Restorer. This is boiled linseed oil aka flaxseed oil. It's inherently hydrophobic and it's used in a lot of furniture oils too. Carguys Plastic Restorer. This is an acrylic polymer and amodimethacone. I know I'm not saying that right. It's a silicone that's used in the cosmetics industry. That's the main ingredient in here. Shampoos and moisturizers have it too. It's just really odd. Uh, it's, a, it's a different way to, to get an end result. So we'll see if it holds up. There's been a lot of people talking about this one. Of course we have Rust-Oleum's Wipe New and they have one that's specifically for trim and that's what I ordered but I was sent from Amazon one called Recolor which is another product they have does the same thing so it is a chlor one chloro four trifluoromethyl benzene it's also known as PCBTF it's an extremely strong solvent it's commonly used in silicones and it has polysilazane in it so that one's a it, we'll get into that a little later but Shine Armor this is the next one. I requested an SDS from these guys and I never heard anything back. So I don't know what all is in this one. Really don't have anything else to go on, unfortunately. Uh, I did buy it on Amazon. Bought it August 9th, 2020, right there. Well requested, highly requested, Cerakote Alky Polysilicate. It's a solvent and a refractory resin. Lots of tongue twisting chemical names here. That's the the uh, main ingredients in that. So again, a different way to get to an end result. Has a 200 wash guarantee. Next up, the black stuff, or that black stuff. They have no email provided on their website. Their phone number, couldn't get anybody to answer during business hours. So I did the, la the next best thing and I sent them snail mail to request the SDS and have not heard anything back for that yet. It is some kind of dye. It is black. Get to Trinova. This is uh, made by a company called Gold Eagle. They make 303, make and distribute 303 heat, stable products. There's lots. Uh, Silazanes are the main ingredients in here. They don't actually have an SDS. They have like a, a version of an SDS where they say we have silazanes in it and it's not harmful. The last coat, Trim, Petroleum Distillates according to their SDS. That's one you didn't see in the video at the beginning of this because it's still in route. I don't have it in my hands yet. So let's hope that that shows up very soon. Next up is Black Wow, Black wow the original formula. And Silozanes is, uh, I've talked to Richard Lynn about this. It has different versions of Silozanes, different types. Um, it has a, a different application process than most of these others and so we'll get into that here in a little bit but it has a longer curing time as well over a day. Next up is Shine Supply Trim Paint. I've reached out to Shine Supply and Jeremy Stevens the owner uh, for an SDS have yet to hear anything back. Next up is Malco Epic Revive New and they make several other products. Um, it's advertised to last up to one year or even longer. It has silozanes and different various various types. Solution Finish, owned by Chris West. We use this product in our shop. 
I've reached out to him for an SDS and have yet to hear back from him. But it says on his website, it's a silicone-free solution that uses natural oils and is VOC compliant, won't damage your trim. So if I hear something back, I'll get you the info there. Next up, we have Nano Cotex Car Protect, their ceramic trim restorer. Lasts up to two years. They're from Canada. I told you uh, earlier that I wanted to try to veer away from the ceramics, but one ended up here anyway. Uh, paid paid full price to get it here, and we're going to include it, see how it holds up against all these others. Main ingredients are kerosene, SiO2, and silane. And finally, we have Black Wow Pro. This is the most expensive product in the test. It's advertised as professional use only, but you can still buy it as a regular consumer. Product uh, contains silazanes, various types, just like the standard Black Wow, just with some differences in it. All right, so that kind of wraps up the science part of it. I'm going to give you kind of a sneak preview. The two little free methods that we have are the heat gun and the torch. You can watch those real quick, but I'm waiting for these other two products to show up and then we'll get this test started. So stay tuned here for a couple days and then we will get things going. Um, my vinyl decals that I usually do, they didn't want to stick to this panel and I, I kind of expected that. So I have a piece of cardboard that I can remove and when this goes outside to sit outside, I'll just keep it in a safe place. So when we every time I go and do a, a video to show the results, I'll just hold this piece of cardboard up to it. That seems to be the easiest way to make it work. So that's going to wrap up the science portion, more of the in-depth about what's in these chemicals. Uh, thank you guys again for subscribing. It really helps out. Uh, like the video and of course comment below as soon as these other two products show up that I'm waiting on in the mail We will get things going. I'm really excited for this test. I think it's gonna be really cool. So Stay tuned. Thanks again guys. See you soon